Good morning and welcome to the Feast of St. Luke, the physician. And as we think about Palestine and Israel, we think about the healing touch that's needed in our world today. Let us pray. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician whose praise is in the gospel to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the gospel, give your church the same love and power to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we come now to the words of our confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things that we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spare those who confess their faith. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father, for the sake that we may have a disciplined, righteous and godly life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1, and is taken from the Message Bible. Later, the master selected 70 and sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he intended to go. He gave them this charge. What a huge harvest, and how few the harvest hands. So on your knees, ask the God of the harvest to send harvest hands. On your way, but be careful. This is hazardous work. You're like lambs in a wolf pack. Travel light, comb and toothbrush, and no other extra luggage. Don't loiter, and make small talk with everyone who you meet along the way. When you enter a home, greet the family. Peace. If your greeting is received, that it's a good place to stay. But if it's not received, take the peace back and leave. Don't impose yourself. Stay at one home, taking your meals there, for a worker deserves three square meals. Don't move from house to house, looking for the best cook in town. When you enter a town and are received, eat what they set before you, heal anyone who is sick and tell them God's kingdom is right on your doorstep. Would you welcome a couple of old guys who rocked up in the middle of Tarvin? If they greeted you with compassion and care, maybe looked a little bit ragged, weren't carrying any clothes, possibly hungry and thirsty. It is hard to maybe comprehend this happening in the world that we now live in. But the sentiment is there. We always greet each other at the beginning of worship in our church, like this greeting. We are welcoming each other into the presence of God, which is what Jesus did in sending out the 72. These are not the disciples, but they are followers of Jesus. These are ordinary people just like you and me who have come to faith. Jesus does not say this is easy work, but what happens is that Jesus sends them out, expecting them to come back. Being together is the unmentioned importance of our reading today. Simply being alone or even in twos is not enough to support the work that is needed. Jesus sends people out to come from a larger community, which is one of the roles of the church. To be there together to energise, inspire, teach, and indeed to prop each other's other up when it is difficult and hard. As I talk to you, I am very much aware that some 
or even most of those watching our services online don't often come to our service here on a Sunday morning in church. And maybe come when they can, and of course, around Christmas time. My concern for us is how can we keep giving compassion to a world that keeps knocking us back and still keep giving without the support of each other? I would say that I am well supported in this place by the people of the villages within the parish and indeed those who come to these churches, including some key people who understand and get that being one of the 72 is not easy. The rejection that comes from being with unwelcomed in places is one which can give us cause to be very upset. And unless we come back together, share our stories and prepare ourselves, heal ourselves, we cannot go back out. We think this coming week of the Feast of St Luke, the one who wrote the Gospel and is considered to have written the Acts of the Apostles, the first account of the beginning of the early church and the early Christian faith. What we seldom talk about are the wounds we receive, the grazes, the cuts, the bruises in spirituality that have a physical effect on our body as well on our souls. We see a world in need of healing. One of the responses to the questions in our liturgy for morning prayer that we use is, the question is, will you share the care and compassion of Christ to a wounded world in desperate needs of God's love, healing and restoration? And we all respond with, we will. Luke is thought to have been a doctor and in some circles, circles, female. The tenderness in which he writes his gospel gives us the inspiration to come back from our wounds, to take time to heal, but not to give up on either ourselves or indeed on other people. There is also within our story the celebration of being welcomed, to heal the sick, to tell the stories of Jesus and to sow the seed that grows into faith. That is what makes it all worthwhile. I reckon if you can save one soul other than your own, then you're doing really well. If you can save two, you are doing great, and any more, then you are amazing. The business of the church is to bring peace, to save souls. You are not in it alone. And any time you need support, wander into the church. If it's open during the week or at the weekend on Sundays, you will be welcomed by the welcome. But remember, they are people on a journey of faith, just like you. And none of us are perfect. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life, work and witness of St Luke. We pray that like him, we may be ready to give a clear account of our faith to all who seek our understanding of the gospel of Christ. We pray for church leaders and for all Christians who are called to speak of their faith on television or on radio, and those whose writing is published widely and read both within the church and beyond its remit. May the witness of your people bring light into the darkest places of our world, Loving God, we pray for all who care for the weak, the fearful and the vulnerable in our world today. We pray for all who are oppressed and treated with contempt and injustice and for those who are seeking freedom for new lives in foreign lands. We ask that you would give us and the leaders of the nations a compassion and understanding and the wisdom and willingness to support and care for your suffering children in our world. We pray for doctors, for nurses, just as your servant St Luke tended to the sick, so we tend to the human frailty of our families. Eternal God, remember those who have died, holding fast to their faith in Christ and those whose faith is known 
only to you. And so we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. God of life and love, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. And may God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen.